All right, you guys, so I just wanted to sit down with you uh, to get you get to know you guys a little bit more and how you got into farming and just how you entered this space, you know, what it, what it kind of took to start this, this small farm and your perspective also, you know, you've been full through a full year now starting your second season. And so you'll have a really great perspective, I think, for everybody who's interested in getting started in this. Um, so first, just, you know, how long have you guys been farming and how did you get interested in market gardening in the first place? So we started the farm essentially last year uh, and Bo and I were working full-time uh, jobs off the farm uh, trying to uh, prepare ourselves for kind of what to expect. Uh, started, started with a um, selling at a local market in Knoxville down at Market Square last year and to get our feet wet and to see if it was even yeah, a possible thing and if there was the, the demand for what we were wanting to grow mm -hmm. and so we're in our second season Bo's on the farm full-time now and uh, I'm working part-time and going to be transitioning into full-time next year so we'll be two of us on the farm uh, full-time next year. And Bo what about you um, what what got you interested in, in market gardening like how did you guys come to this conclusion like yeah I want to grow food and sell it as my business? Sure um, well, you know, the the food system in America, we, we definitely saw an issue with that. We wanted to know where our food came from, what's being put on it, and there's really, that's hard to hard to know when you're buying it from a grocery store. Um, so, and, and we've always kind of, for the last, I don't know, five or six years, we've always been kind of growing our own food in our own little gardens. Um, and then I went off to Colorado with my wife and I was out there for two years on a luxury guest ranch and I just kind of fell into, by default, I kind of became the, the head gardener for the chef there. And I had a great mentor who taught me a lot and really, really um, encouraged me. She said, you can, you know, this is a viable thing you can do, market gardening. You can make money doing it if you do it the right way. And, and um, she was in her her late 50s and she was um, market gardening in a small town of Ridgeway in, um, in Colorado and doing really, really well just her by herself on less acreage than, than we have here. So um, when I came back to Colorado, Paul had had some pigs and he had chickens and or came back from Colorado to Tennessee. Paul had pigs and chickens and um, had a nice big garden set up and uh, we knew we wanted to do something in ag together and we knew we didn't we didn't want to do it large scale we didn't want to go into debt buying tractors or a lot of equipment or anything like that nor did we have the land to facilitate that as well so um you know all that mixed with seeing curtis stone's videos and uh, a lot of youtube videos back three or four years ago uh, really really put the bug in us that we could we could make a go of it market gardening so now that you've gone through your first year of market gardening you know, what are some of the bigger challenges that you faced going through that first year that maybe you didn't expect or maybe you did expect them, they're a little bit more difficult to deal with? Um, I think some, some, some challenges uh, would include obviously just environmental challenges that we have with uh, pest pressures. Um, we deal with a lot, of, uh, a lot of hot weather and humidity down here in the south. And so that's certainly, that's certainly a challenge for the kind of stuff that we're growing, which is atypical of what the normal farm, uh, small farm in this area would grow, like beans and corn and squash and tomatoes. You know, we're growing a lot of cool weather loving crops, uh, lettuces, baby roots, um, arugula, uh, broccolis, things like that that, um, that uh, don't, don't really care for the the, the hot weather so that's been a little bit of a challenge challenge coming up with techniques or implementing techniques that we've learned uh, from other growers that are uh, like Ray Tyler uh, which is here in Tennessee uh, west of us and he's been uh, super awesome to share uh, a lot of things that uh, he's he's had issues with and some of the successes that he's had so uh, gleaning some of those things from other farmers uh, has been has been uh, really nice and uh, um, so I, I'd say, you know, dealing with the, the temperature, the climate, and uh, the pest issues have been some of our 
biggest issues. We certainly haven't had much trouble selling our products. We've had great response and feedback from uh, customers uh, selling most of our products through uh, one farmer's market on Saturday and one on Wednesday and, and uh, moving some maybe 10 to 15 percent through local restaurants. Uh, so so uh, feedback's been great mm -hmm. and uh, it's encouraging us along and uh, we know it's doable and we can scale it up just a little bit uh, for next year and maybe include a little more diversity in the products that we have to offer. So. Awesome. And how many, uh, I think I might have forgot to ask you guys this on the tour, but how much uh, bed space are you working with? And how many beds do you have in production right now? So we, yeah, we've got about 12 to 13,000 square feet total. And so that includes pathways and the standard 30 inch wide market garden bed. And our pathways really kind of range from 12 inches to the widest being 18. And so that gives you a good, yeah. good idea about mm -hmm. right around a quarter acre under, okay. under nice. production. And you've got four, five field blocks? Is that how it's separated out, something like that? That's it, yeah, five, yeah, five. field blocks. So mm -hmm. they're kind of spread about, uh -huh. utilizing the, the most suitable land, uh, more of the level land that we've got, and we've kind of really kind of got it maxed out here uh, on, this, on this space. So speaking to uh, some of the issues you've had with heat and pests, in the farm tour we took a, lot, a look at some of your uh, uh, insect netting, your your cat tunnels, and how has it been using those things, and how have they helped you? Could you farm without them? Uh, no, I don't. Well, we could. It would just, I think it'd just be a lot harder. It makes things there. You know, the the insect netting is is an added thing to deal with, as far as taking it on, putting it on, taking it off to cultivate, putting it back on, taking it off to harvest. And if you're not cropping out, putting it back on, but it does make for a much cleaner product. You know, we could still sell baby arugula probably with with um, little insect bites taken out of it, Asian beetle bites. But you know, I don't think we could get the price we could for it, obviously, uh, without the insect netting. So it's a it's really um, it really allows us to have a much more consistent, higher quality product. Um, and then as far as the tunnels go. You know, extending the season, um, we're going to try to grow as much as we can this winter. Uh, we, we took last winter off uh, after our first season, so we're going to try to really do as much production as we can um, this winter in the tunnels and under, you know, um, poly low, low tunnels as well. Um, but, you know, as far as you can keep some insects off with the insect net, uh, but you can't keep them all off. You can see from the from the tour that we definitely have an issue in the tunnels with thrips, and you know their their eggs are in the soil. So um, we're just going to try to do as much as we can this year and the beginning of next year to add beneficials, uh, beneficial insects and predator insects to help alleviate those issues. Um, so cool. yeah, I might add on the the tunnels. Like one of the main reasons, other than like uh, extending the season. With the tunnels is to kind of keep excess rain off crops. Oh. Like we struggled last year uh, with things like the Salanova and other things that were just rotting in the field because of excess rain. We had a, a really wet summer. And so that's that's definitely one benefit mm -hmm. to the tunnels. You can kind of, uh, you've got a little bit of control over uh, some of those, those heavy rain and or extended rain events as well. So. Yeah, because you guys told me like what, 50 inches a year here? That's about average, but last yeah. year we had over 65, I think. Wow. And this and so, year we're way low. I don't even know yeah. what we've had so far. So it's certainly uh, interesting. Definitely the drought now. But so. uh, we, we, get, we don't get very much rain in the summertime. It kind of comes more early winter and then into the spring. It's, it's the, the most wet time of the year here. Now that you've gone through your first year of farming, what have been sort of the key tools that you feel you, you really needed, you couldn't have lived without? Uh, the paper pot transplanter is a huge one. You know, definitely we, we found uh, that the, the tilter has been a great tool for bed prep because uh, we're, we're essentially using a no-till system, so we're not, we're not in with the BCS tilling, doing any deep tillage. Uh, so we're using the tilter to prep uh, beds for the paper pot and for uh, the seeders that we use. And um, um, 
so yeah, that's that's been a great one. Uh, the tilter from Johnny's. Yeah, the um, you know the greens harvester for especially for the arugula, and as we move into winter, we're going to be more doing more baby greens, and um, you know that's that's a key tool for, for baby green production. Really saves a lot of time. Um, broad fork's broad a great fork, tool. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great tool for deep deep uh, soil aeration. Uh, it allows to get you know oxygen down into the soil without inverting the soil layers so it really uh, it really it does a nice job of uh, not disturbing the soil biology uh, too much and um, uh, it also allows for for water uh, mm -hmm. to flow through mm -hmm. and, and better nutrient cycling mm -hmm. our favorite our favorite our <laughs> yeah. favorite cedar is the uh, the jang or uh, a better pronunciation is uh, the, the jung jung yeah. jung yes so uh, the, the official korean uh, pronunciation and that just allows for like super precise um, seeding uh, precision spacing and uh, it's just a super tool we call it the Cadillac uh, <laughs> the Cadillac of seeded yeah man, we have it, an earthway as well and we we uh, we definitely prefer the, the jung oh yeah um, definitely so, you know. And you guys have super heavy clay soil, even heavier than I have in San Diego, I think. So, yeah, it was interesting that you really, uh, you really like the tilther for, for bed prep, because probably if you don't use it, um, what, what happens? Like, well, and along with the tilther, we, we have to, we do a lot of heavy amending oh, with compost. Yeah. If we were just trying to tilth the clay without compost, okay. especially at this time of year when it's dry, it just... I mean, the tilter's just bouncing on that yeah. clay. So, um, yeah, if we didn't, if so, along along with the tilter having the compost, and you know, if we if we were trying to sow in a bed that just didn't have enough compost in it, we didn't have any more to put in it. It would definitely be a lot more handwork to try to to get that bed in a shape to be seated in. So, um, yeah, the tilter definitely works well with with a heavy dose of compost on our heavy clay soils. What were some resources that really helped you in the beginning? I guess we kind of touched on, on YouTube, but was there any books or anything else that you you studied that really helped you like maybe get a jump start on all this and, and just learning the basic skills of market gardening? Yeah, you know, Curtis Stone, obviously, uh, he was one of our big uh, inspirations uh, that you could do it actually uh, and started up uh, on a shoestring budget. Uh, we probably invested more maybe than, than some might, but uh, with our limited time available and young families, we knew that that was something that we needed to, to do. And so he was pretty in instrumental of showing, uh, sharing that, that you can do it. And a lot of the techniques that, that he, uh, he put out there on YouTube uh, was, uh, were, were, were great for a, a beginning farmer, aspiring farmer, even, even farmers that have been farming for a while you know he's got great techniques and uh, tips and um, anything from post harvest uh, to the tools he uses techniques to pricing uh, how he prices products uh, his book obviously um, JM Forte's book yeah JM's book The Market, Market Gardener. Gardener those were great definitely two great books mm -hmm. uh, that, that were uh, very influential on our farm and podcasts uh, too um, you know farmer to farmer Farmer to Farmer. Uh, you know, um, Diego's um, podcast. Um, Farm Small, Farm, Farm Smart. Smart. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. his uh, super great content out there. Ben Hartman's got some good content out there um, with his, his lean techniques and uh, how he uses the, the paper pots. Uh, definitely been a good tool for us with the uh, spacing and uh, how he does crops in the paper pot. So that's been a, it's been a good one. And also, uh, you know, before we even started our first year last year, we signed up for um, uh, Connor Crickmore's um, uh, Market course. Garden online course, mm -hmm. and that was huge, huge, and just uh, just show, showing you that what to do because you we didn't know I didn't know how to prep a bed or you know wash veggies or how to you know do anything really because we've never farmed before so on this scale so. Um, you know, being able to see it, watch a video, and then being able to communicate with him if we had a question as well was a, was a huge help. So that course helped us out a lot too. Oh, and again, um, earlier this year, we spent a day with uh, the culinary gardener, uh, Evan Chan Chander? Chinder. Chinder. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Over Nashville. Because we, we really wanted to 
start selling to restaurants more and he was um, he's a great resource for us mm -hmm. as well because we can communicate with him just on pricing or if we have questions on a new funky veg that we're wanting to grow that we know he's growing that chefs are going to like so he's other farmers have been have helped mm -hmm. us as well so that's definitely great like for for a young farmer to, to seek out other farmers in your area that are that are uh, are established and doing well I mean that's a that's a great resource if you can have somebody to reach out to do you guys have any other advice like personal advice that you would give some young farmers or people you know interested in maybe trying to get into this what would you guys advise them to do I'd say reach out to uh, um, a, a farm that uh, a farming style that you're kind of if you if you've made a decision on the kind of style of farm that you that you that you want to have uh, reach out to that farmer and um, pick their brain about things and uh, and and look to them for guidance and uh, and a direction and uh, even go spend some time on their farm and, and help them even if it's uh, free labor just uh, kind of get your feet wet and uh, see if it's even if it's even for you or not because uh, I think sometimes people there's these, these grand visions of having a farm but it's not uh, it's not it's not um, it's not easy and uh, there are a lot of challenges that you're going to face and uh, you, you don't get into farming to make a lot of money. It's just uh, you get into it for the, the joy of being outside in nature on your land um, and having freedom and that's that lifestyle. I think that uh, if you like that lifestyle, farming could be a good, a good career choice and uh, seek out those references. Maybe sign up for an online course. Those are, those are great. Uh, there's so much great uh, content out there, free YouTube videos. I mean, that's, that's, uh, check it out, you know, and uh, talk, to, talk to other farmers in your area, talk to other farmers at your farmer's market, um, go see what they're selling, uh, talk to restaurants, you know, and uh, try, to, try, to be, try to have your own niche because that's what you really need something to separate you from the rest of the pack. And that's kind of that's kind of how we approached approach that. Like, what products aren't being offered, and try to make those happen. So, you guys, would you guys have any good tips for us for for sales and maybe selling at the market or selling to restaurants? Is there anything that you've noticed that was like, wow, that really worked? Or yeah, piles of produce. <laughs> you know, you have you you stack everything high. Um, really draws as far as at the market you know it really draws the customer we, we'll see people walk by and they'll kind of do a double take and they'll come in because there's there's you know 70 bunches of carrots in a pile and they're like wow i've never seen that many carrots piled up in front of me before so um working on your display at the market once you as far as you know you get the your farm in order and everything and you go to market working on your display has really helped us a lot um we Having clean of, products yeah, too. Very like clean doing products. a nice job in the post harvest is crucial, you know, yeah, like quality, quality, you know, making sure everything looks as good as it tastes. Um, you know, that's we've really focused on quality a lot too, which which adds uh, brings brings people into the booth a lot. And same thing with and restaurants too, quality is key with restaurants. Even when you bring it to them, how you you know, how you have it in the tote when they first open it. To you see want to the give product. it that wow factor. Yeah. You know, when you open the tote up to, to transfer it to them, you know, mm -hmm. like you want it to be nice and clean and organized and not just willy nilly placed in there. So mm -hmm. that's that's important. Yeah, especially when you know we're demanding a, you know, some of the highest priced veg available. Well, we should we get that price because it's beautiful. It tastes like you said. It tastes as, as good as it looks. Mm -hmm. um, has more nutrients, all of those different things. So yeah, that's Absolutely. great, great tips. So I wanted to touch on a little bit of your, your personal health journey, just cause I was, I was kind of blown away a little bit by it. You guys said that when you're a little bit younger, um, in your early twenties, you were you know, living a, a lot more unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah. Even Do you guys mind sharing a little bit of that? Yeah. Even into our thirties. Yeah, not, okay. not so long ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I was always a uh, bigger kid growing up. Um, I was always active, played a lot of sports and was always outside and things, but always liked to eat junk food and um, overeat just in general. So, you know, I was, I was, I'm six foot and I weighed up to, I weighed over 250 at one point in my life in my early 20s. So uh, I knew I didn't, 
want to be like that the rest of my life and um, the health problems that went with it, which I kind of started to realize in my 30s, you know, I think a lot of people in their 20s aren't aren't as healthy as they should be, but um, I got into my 30s, I know that, okay, now's the time to really, really start to make a change for the better, for the long, for the long haul. Um, and, and a big part of that was what I ate and once I changed what I ate, then it's like, okay, where's what I'm eating, where did that come from? And that's kind of what, what uh, led us to, to the farming as well, so. Yeah, same for me. Uh, always been, always been bigger, uh, up, up to 240, even in my uh, early 30s. And, um, uh, you know, started, started growing a garden nine, 10 years ago and uh, just realized how much of the, the quality of health uh, in, in the food you were missing out on uh, by not doing that, so it was it was great to to uh, you know s slowly start into gardening, and that that definitely influences obviously the way you eat and the way even you shop for the things that you have to buy. And uh, yeah, same thing, overeating a lot, eating uh, bad quality food, a lot of processed foods, um, a lot of sugary drinks, things like that that uh, basically cut out all the sugary drinks. Uh, still eat some processed foods here and there but uh, we eat a lot of uh, fresh vegetables and a lot of obviously a lot of things from the farm and do a lot of our shopping from the uh, the local food co-op and uh, and uh, local meat products uh, that are that are raised in our in our region and uh, so you know starting a family a few years back really uh, that that really um, influences I think the way that um, that you want to move forward to the way that you want to show your children to eat and uh, you can't be eating all the junk and be trying to uh, feed them feed them um, the good stuff it just doesn't work like that so um, we're I'm pushing 40 Bo's in his upper 30s and uh, so uh, we know we we want to be around for for a long time with our kids and hopefully some grandkids and so um, yeah, and we're we're out here farming uh, too. So we we you can't be a. It's hard to be a, an overweight uh, big farmer and trying to move vegetables. You know, it just doesn't quite. You need to to fit the role, and uh, you need to be a person that um, also that your your customers kind of look up to and and uh, have that relationship uh, with your customers and and. Um, um, you know, you want to, you want to obviously, you, we, we're, we're producing all this great food. And so, uh, we, we've already got it. So it's like, and it, and it tastes great. It's, 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 uh, high in, in, uh, in nutrients and, uh, it's just, uh, it's just great for you. Yeah. And that being said, you know, there is nothing like a cold beer at the end of a long day. Of <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> got to live a little, <laughs> but yeah, I just think it's so awesome just to think about you know, where you guys have come from to where you are now and just letting people know that it doesn't matter where you're starting from, you know, you can start with no knowledge, very unhealthy, and, you know, look how radically you can change your life to now they're providing health not only for themselves and their own families, but, you know, another hundred families out there in the Knoxville area. So it's yep. just really inspiring. Yeah, it's great to hear. It's great to hear from some of the people that buy from us and uh, that have young, young children now. That uh, talking about, you know, thanking us for the quality food that we're we're growing and uh, it's really benefiting them and their young children and and pregnant women too. I mean, it's oh, yeah. it's great hearing that how appreciative uh, these people are and and uh, it gives you great encouragement to keep moving forward and keep doing better mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's awesome. Yeah, I feel the same way with my customers. That's awesome. What are your future plans for Mountain Roots Farm? What's coming next for you guys? Well, earlier this year, we uh, we bought a piece of property. It's closer to Knoxville. It's only about 15 minutes outside of the city. And um, we're going to be transitioning the farm to that property. Hopefully, we'll be fully moved by uh, spring of 2021. So we'll be here... Um, you know, for next season, we'll be doing production off these this plot, or these plots, and uh, slowly moving the, the the farm over to that property uh, next fall. I think is where we're going to start. But we are going to start. Hopefully, we'll get some some land prepped over there 
this fall and early winter to be, you know, as far as cover cropping or, um, you know, even tilling and, and covering with uh, silage tarps. We still haven't figured that out yet, but mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the future of the farm is um, the new piece of property, which is uh, 17 acres. Uh, most of it's wooded, so we want to do, uh, we want to get into forest farming, um, maybe some mushroom production. It's been our second year, we've got so many ideas and we've had so many ideas for years and, um, you know, just kind of, we'll see where everything's going to take us. Uh, Paul's got more to add on that. Yeah, I definitely too. want to uh, encourage, you know, part of the reason for being closer to our market is it's definitely to draw some of our customers and even some people that aren't our customers out of the, out of the city and uh, to get them to the farm for uh, future educational workshops that we're hoping to put on if, if that's not us, uh, bringing in other people that are specialized in other areas to, um, to do things for, uh, to teach people about how they can do some of this stuff uh, on, on their, their home scale, uh, whether that's food production, you know, uh, veg production or mushroom production. Uh, or, or fermenting, um, those are those are the types of things that uh, that we're that we're interested in. Educating people, we see a lot of a lot of room for 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 that. We think there's some demand for it. Um, setting up a small commercial kitchen too is part of our our uh, future plans for value-added uh, products that we're pulling off the farm. Uh, we're, we're very interested in in fermenting. We love making ferments for ourselves. They taste great. They have so many. Uh, beneficial uh, qualities uh, nutrition wise and um, so that's definitely one of the things that we're excited about and then also just kind of like uh, creating our our homesteads as well uh, setting up uh, setting us up for the future as well too like uh, on on, fam on our own family levels uh, by getting in perennial fruits and uh, uh, trees and even uh, nut crops and things like that. I think that's that's something that's super important for us. We kind of like had grand dreams years ago of homesteading together, but realized that you have to make money too. And so it's kind of like, uh, it's gonna allow us to do to do both uh, at the same time uh, in, in uh, allowing us to generate money from, from the land and even setting up some accommodations for uh, for people to come stay too. Another another avenue for um, uh, for for revenue, uh, another revenue stream for us. So uh, these are all just some of the ideas that, that we have uh, for the future of Mountain Roots Farm, and uh, we're, we're looking looking forward to the to the future. Mm -hmm. so. And on that too, you know, we we along with our our pest pressure this year, we realized that we need to have uh, some habitats for uh, predator bugs and beneficial you know pollinators and things like that so we really, really want to do some hedgerows in between our plots and uh, some of that being edible mm -hmm. like Paul mentioned and uh, you know uh, just having that uh, whole ecosystem on the farm that can um, really benefit the crops and the land and, uh, and, and us ultimately. Beautiful guys. Thank you so much for uh, doing this interview. I know a lot of people learned a lot from listening. And if people want to check out uh, more about you guys, where can they find you to follow along? Uh, our website is mountainrootsfarm.com. Paul, yep. Paul does uh, most of the Instagram. He does a great job with that. And that's at... Yeah. Uh, Instagram is at mountainrootsfarmtn for Tennessee, mountainrootsfarmtn. And then you can also find us on Facebook from time to time at uh, Mountain Roots Farm. Yeah. So. And thank you for all you do, Stephen. Yeah, thanks, oh. man. You've, yeah. Been, uh, you've been super inspirational for, for us even and for many other people, whether that's aspiring farmers or uh, just... People that wanna that wanna take uh, their their nutrition and food into their own hands and grow a little bit on their small space, even if it's in the city like you're doing. You know, it's essentially what we're doing here is urban farming, but in a rural setting. So you don't need a lot of land. You can grow mm -hmm. a lot of food. And uh, absolutely, thanks for all the content that you're putting out, man. You're doing yeah. a great job. Thanks, guys. Yeah, my pleasure. Love doing it. So, yeah, hope to see you guys soon. Right on. And uh, I'll put all the links to their information down in the description. So be sure to go follow them and and.